I just got back from Rose City Comic Con, aka the Portland, Oregon area. Flew all the way across the country, met some really cool people. I'll be doing a vlog all about that trip very soon once I go through all my footage and figure out um, how I kind of want to do it. But that footage is there to be released within the next couple weeks. But I just kind of wanted to come in and talk and catch up a little bit because this past weekend has been crazy and I'll save specifics for that vlog, but I just, I, at the root of everything, just want to say I am very grateful for all of you and I am so excited for what's to come and I'm finally breaking down the very last couple layers of the self-doubt I've had for a very long time and the worry of not being good enough, that my videos aren't good enough, that I'm not good enough as a person, that I will never succeed. All of those worries have been becoming less and less prevalent and they've felt less and less accurate. For a long time, I felt very back and forth on if I thought I could actually do this for my job. And I'm finally at the point where I, I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> And I'm gonna work my hardest and I'm gonna try to learn from others and I'm gonna figure it out and I'm not going to try to sabotage that I'm not going to second-guess myself I'm not going to belittle myself in my head I'm gonna stop trying to dim my light to make others feel brighter in every aspect of my life in YouTube, in friendships, relationships, anything like that. It's important to know that you should never have to make yourself feel less than to feel loved. This is something that I learned this lesson a very, very long time ago, but it's finally solidifying in my head. It's finally becoming actually my thought rather than a reminder I have to tell myself. I've had friendships years and years ago where it felt like if I was trying to succeed that inherently made those around me feel bad or was a burden to those around me. And I just realized through recording this last weekend and meeting many inspirational, amazing people. Um, I met the cast of Critical Role, I met Kaiji Tang, I met a lot of really cool people and a lot of amazing artists and just creatives from all facets of life. Um, and just being in that environment and with my one year plan <laughs> like in motion right now, it was just really, Cool. Thinking of the future and what's to come and thinking of how far I've come and how I don't feel like I've come very far, but it really is far. I have come far and I'm going to go even farther. And I want you all to believe in yourselves like that too. I want you to know that what you've done is amazing and you should never sell yourself short and feel like what you have accomplished isn't a lot because it is a lot. But that doesn't mean you can't accomplish even more. You have unlimited, un unlimited potential. You have unlimited potential. And it's all about finding the pieces of the puzzle. Anything is a puzzle. And I actually clicked onto one of Markiplier's live streams recently. Uh, it came out a couple weeks ago, I think at this point, but it was him just, uh, it was the I hate Ethan stream. <laughs> uh, just the jokey stream about him being mad at Ethan for playing a game before he got the chance to. And um, 
Markiplier in that, Mark, he, when I clicked on to the live stream, it, he had already done the whole spiel at the beginning. I backed up to watch it. But when I clicked on it, the initial thing I heard was someone asking in chat, how do you grow on YouTube? Well, how do you succeed on YouTube? I think is more so what they said. And he responded, well, that depends on what you measure success. Obviously this is like paraphrasing. I don't know word for word for what, what he said, but the gist of what he said stuck with me in basically he said, it depends on what you see as success. If success is growth first, you know, if you need to grow first, then you succeed in every other way, you know, then you need to figure out, you need to figure it out like a puzzle. And I'm not gonna tell you the answer to that puzzle because then that would, that would take away the point of the puzzle. It's fun to figure it out. And I think that's something that I really did not see for a long time. Um, I thought it was fun when I was younger, um, but then I became so wrapped up in the idea of having to succeed. I have to succeed. I have to do this. I have to do what I love and I can't ever, it can't take time. It has to happen now is how I felt like it was for a while. And that moment kind of really like, it was like the tip of the iceberg. It was like the, not the tip of the iceberg. It was the straw that broke the camel's back is I think a better phrasing. It was the last thing that finally solidified. Oh, that's how it's supposed to feel. And it was a very interesting moment and it was very cool. And I really felt in that moment like as long as I try and I'm constantly adapting and expanding and trying new things and I'm sticking with it, then I'm doing the puzzle. I might not be doing it as quickly as someone else. I might not be getting the exact same result, but I'm doing the puzzle. And that's the fun part. The fun part's doing the puzzle. <laughs> and the puzzle is obviously just a metaphor for whatever task you have that you don't know the answer to right now. I don't know how to be successful on YouTube for fact, for certain. I don't know how to, period, you know? I don't know that definitively. I know what has worked for me in the past, I know what has worked for others currently and in the past, and all I can do is take those and apply them the best I can and make content I love to make and just apply those little, I guess, tips and tricks to fit into the puzzle. But at the end of the day, the core of it is making stuff that I like to make and that I think others will like to watch. And I get asked a lot recently um, questions about how to succeed and how to do this and how to do that. And I'm flattered every time I'm asked it because I'm still asking myself those questions. And I give the best advice I can. I give tips from everything I've learned along the way. But I don't know for certain. I don't know for certain. And... That's something that I didn't realize I felt so heavily about until I heard that puzzle piece analogy and that's a puzzle and I can't just tell you what the puzzle, like how to solve the puzzle or else, you know, that defeats the purpose. It's your puzzle. Also, you don't know someone, this is something else that Mark said in the, in the live stream after someone asked that, like you don't know I don't know your strengths or your, you know, your weaknesses or like what you're good at and how you can make content out of that. That's your journey to find out. And I realized over this past weekend of meeting all these amazingly talented people, I'm not tapping into all my strengths. I love writing. 
That is a big thing I love doing. And I love creating. I love creating. I love making shows. I love making videos. I love every part of it. Every single part of it. And that alone, I have to remind myself, sets me up for the right path. Because that's the first step to anything. Do you enjoy it? Do you enjoy what you do? And if you don't, why are you still doing it? Unless it's necessity, unless you need to do this thing to get to a certain point to be able to do the thing you love, or you're doing this to provide for your family or anything like that. But if you are able to do the other thing, what realistically is holding you back from choosing to do something you love versus what you thought was smart? And I think even people that are in creative fields get into that rut of feeling like they have to do what's smart rather than what they love. Um, and this is almost a reminder to myself in the future to find, to remember to keep the balance. As I said, it's okay to look at what success looks like for me and others and take tips and tricks and learn from others and learn from the mistakes of myself and the successes from myself and all of that. It's great to do that, but at the core, it should just be what you love to do. I realized that I have always wanted to act and I do a lot of voice acting. Um, a lot of which you guys will be seeing very soon on some other YouTube channels. <laughs> um, as well as in a Five Nights at Freddy's fan game. I don't think I can say what character I play yet, but there's a demo coming out for it pretty soon, and so keep an eye out for that. It's called The Forgotten Fugue. Um, it's by Magmadev. I love acting a lot, um, and my role plays is a big way I get to do that. I get to write the characters, direct the scenes, as well as act in the production, and that's something I've always wanted to do. I went into Minecraft roleplays because I loved the storytelling medium that it created. Um, being able to direct, write, and act all on my own, and not having to rely on anyone, like a film team or anything like that, to be able to tell the story. But I'm realizing I kind of want to do more. I kind of want to do more screen acting, I kind of want to do different types of characters, I want to expand what I do a little bit. Um, the secret project I've been working on that you guys have seen itty bitty little snippets of, especially if you're a channel member, you've seen more than if not. Um, that is going to be coming out very soon. Um, and that is a little out of the box. Uh, it's something that I've wanted to do and it's, um, it's a Minecraft roleplay, but, um, it takes some of my favorite things about Minecraft roleplays um, and highlights them and showcases them more and it has charm and fun and I don't know, I just, I'm very proud of how it's turning out so far. Um, it's very video gamey. Um, it feels like you're watching someone play like an open world RPG or maybe an Ultime game, kind of a mixture of the both, I guess would be the best way to put it. Um, there's like a complex leveling system and a points system, and um, without getting too into it, as you guys know, it's a bisexual uh, vampire romance thing, but it's also horror and it's also um, a new world for me to write and explore in. Um, I also love, this is another thing that I just want to add in here, I'm realizing how much I want to dive into me being on screen. Um, obviously you guys see my face normally in uh, live streams, I typically have face cam on, um, and in my regular videos, my non roleplay videos, you guys have been seeing my face in those. Um, but uh, I, I want to I wanna explore what doing stuff with this, you know, has to offer. Um, 
And I know this is a very rambly video, very all over the place, very um, unedited, but think of it as um, like Markiplier's old, old vlogs where we'd go on and talk about believing in yourself and his plans for things. So this, is, this is really, it's the type of video I wanted to make, was one of those. And here I am. This will not be taken away from anything coming out this week. There will still be an Internet Crush episode on Saturday and a video talking about why FNAF role plays got so big and kind of my opinion on them um, coming out Friday, both at 3.30 p.m. EST. Um, and so, yeah. <laughs> um, as I was saying, though, um, I want to get more into doing stuff on cam and stuff. Um, I've also thought about doing more D&D &D content. I want to post more on Instagram and do reels on Instagram. Um, I'm more of an Instagram user than a TikTok user. I use Instagram like TikTok though. I watch reels a lot over there. TikTok was not great for my mental health. It's easier for me to get off of Instagram than it is for TikTok. Um, and I found my productivity has gone up a lot since not going on TikTok as well as my mental health. So um, if you want TikTok style content from me, um, I do plan on trying to do that occasionally over on Instagram, um, but I want to do it the way I have it envisioned in my head. I guess the whole summary, <laughs> too long didn't read, of this whole video is I have some really cool ideas and I'm really excited to share them with you all. Um, because I'm getting finally to the point and I'm getting this I'm getting more and more into this as t as time goes on as well but I'm finally feeling confident that I can do it and I hope you guys are here for the journey I hope you guys are along for the ride, and maybe one day I'll have a YouTube's plushie like that. <laughs> yeah. I love you guys. Thank you. Because without you guys, I couldn't be doing anything I'm doing currently. Um, but help me get to, well... In the bigger scheme of things, I guess because we're reaching for the stars, not just we're reaching for the heavens, not just the stars. Um, the stars being when I hit 50k, uh, 50,000 subscribers, I am going to be dyeing my hair pink to match the Izumi logo. I've never had my hair pink before. I've had it purple before. I've never had an all over dye though. I've always had I've had an under dye with like face framing pieces, and I've had my hair auburn before and I've had it black before but I've never had it like all over bright pink um, and so I want to dye it pink and I'm probably gonna keep it pink for a very very long time after that um, to my pink girl era um, but the heavens would be a hundred thousand subscribers um, I have a little goal I have set for myself a little goal um, of hitting a hundred thousand subscribers by September 1st 2024 um, and I'm trying to basically unlock the small pieces to that grand puzzle <laughs> and figure out what needs to be done to get there. Um, and I'm figuring out every day and I'm learning from my mistakes and I'm expanding and growing my mind <laughs> every day, as well as my confidence. Um, if you have any advice or anything like that, let me know down below. Um, we're all in this together, high school musical style, and out of anything, I just want to be able to make this sustainably my life, and I hope that you want to be a part of that life. I love you guys. 